Hello and welcome back to Pulled Focus. We are here again with one of the filmmakers from this year's Deep Fried Film Festival. Please welcome Flynn Matthews, who has a film in this year called Tales from the Take. Flynn, can you tell us a bit about your filmmaking experience? Sure, so I'm an actor director based in South West London and um, the film that's involved with the festival is Tales from the Take, which I have written and directed with two friends of mine who are brothers, uh, which are George Harry and Ollie Harry. Fab, we'll have a little look at your film just now. A common misconception is that people choose to get involved with the wrong crowds in life. That just isn't true. I've got a job for you two. to the soundtrack there <laughs> what inspired the film um so it's very random actually so this is technically a sort of sequel so george and ollie wrote and directed a web series called the tales from the take about just before lockdown so a couple of years ago and then finished it there and it was sort of inspired by i'm sort of talking to them but from what they've told me it was inspired very much by guy ritchie films and general action adventure films and also a lot of British comedy stuff as well um, and then I went to George a couple of years later um, and had an idea for a sort of rough you know action adventure sort of group of motley people and again sort of Guy Ritchie and then we sort of put our heads together and realized that the characters they'd written for that web series were quite fitted for the idea I had so that's sort of where it came from really. So you mentioned Guy Ritchie there. Is there any other filmmakers that inspire your work? I'm a big fan. I know that George and Ollie are as well, but I'm a big fan of Taika Waititi and his um, his comedy, and also especially things that he's done with with the Marvel work with Thor. And sort of very similar to this film is that he doesn't really take himself too seriously, which is a big part of what we wanted to achieve in the film because the film is very, very silly and it's very, you can't really take it seriously because it's just, it's just good fun. And that's what we wanted to do with it really was just do our version of a big fun, you know, Hollywood blockbuster, but on a micro budget. It's, it's funny you mentioned them because there is a bit of um, sort of what we do in the shadows sort of kind of pacing yeah. to it as well. And that kind of almost cheekiness, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, absolutely. So what, what challenges did you face while you, you were making the film? Um, there, were, there, were, there were a lot of challenges. We, we had to write it. I mean, George and Ollie did a lot of the writing. I was sort of a co-writer with them, but we had to write most of the film as we were making it because of availability of actors. So we'd have to show up on days of filming with most of us not actually knowing how it was going to end or where our characters, because I'm in the film as well. So as an actor, it's very difficult not really thinking where your character's going or where he's ended up, especially, you know, I think the first day we shot, we filmed one of the last scenes. I mean, that's how it is with film, but I mean, when you haven't, you don't know where your character's been properly as you've made it, that's very tricky, but there are a lot, of, there was also, there's a whole final act based in a mansion and written in the mansion and we showed up to the location and we weren't allowed to use the mansion, which was great. So it meant that we had to rewrite the whole thing based around the sort of grounds of the mansion, which to be honest, ended up working really well. And we all just put our heads together and came up with set pieces we could do around the garden and it ended up being great. So, yeah. And how did you find the balance between the, the acting side and the, the directing side? It's, um, 
it's very difficult. It's very difficult not to, because I was sort of, me and George were the main editors of the film and I did a lot of editing on it. And it's, it's, that's where the most difficult part is, I think, because when you're making it, I'm very lucky that I had George and Ollie to sort of be more of leaders of directors while I was focusing on my performance. Then when I wasn't in a scene, I could take the lead and do a bit of directing. Whereas when I was editing it, that's when it's more tricky because I find it very difficult, you know, not being self-conscious. And there might be a scene that I don't think is very good because I'm just self-critical and George and Ollie will have to sort of say, well, you are good in that bit or not good in that bit. And so it's that's where it's tricky, I, I find. And what got you into filmmaking in the first place? I've, I've always loved filmmaking, really. As, as someone who's grown up, I have a very creative family, so I've grown up with all actors in my family. And it was sort of a way to fulfill that dream of it, I guess, and sort of use it as a, but you know, a, a good pairing of acting and directing, because I find it sort of, again, why Taika Waititi is a big inspiration for me, because he's in a lot of his films. Um, and just mates of mine as well, George and Ollie, who both made it, Billy, who was the DOP, were all lovers of film and meeting other people that are love film. You sort of all just want to, that's what you want to do when you spend time together, just come up with ideas and make stuff. So. And is this similar to previous work or completely different to anything you've done before? It's very, it's very different. I, I mean, we all, what's fun about it is we all have very different styles on our own. So George and Ollie are very comedy orientated. They've done some great web series stuff on Luna Films. And I'm very, I'm a lot more like Terence Malick when I direct. I do very artsy, experimental kind of stuff. And Billy, who was the DOP, who was involved a lot, has done a lot of horror films and a lot of sort of teen drama stuff. So it's very different to what we've all done, but it sort of has worked quite well. Because we've sort of brought it all together, which has been fun. And what advice would you get give to anyone who's interested in becoming a filmmaker? I would say just, just do it. It sounds simple, but just make it. We're very lucky that we live in a day and age that you can just, on your phone, you can just make a film. And I think especially whether it's you want to direct or act or write, I think just go out and do it because that's what I've been doing. I, I have an agent and I audition, but the most joy I get from acting are projects that I've made with all these guys. So I think just go out and make your own stuff. And this year we are, because of COVID's changed, it was all online last year. This year we've got a combination of online and in person. So why should people watch your film? I think, for, I mean, for me, film is, is well, it's my love, it's my main love, but I just find film is the best way to escape. I think our film is a good example of just if you just want to forget daily problems and you want to not think about how awful the world can be sometimes, to just go and lose yourself in a project and be inspired or, or, or laugh or cry. Hopefully in ours you laugh. If you don't, then we haven't done a very good job. <laughs> but that's, that's what I would say. Brilliant. Well, I can't wait to get the audience feedback on the Tales from the Take. Um, the winners are voted by our audience, so maybe we'll be talking to you later in the season. And it would be great to catch up at some point and hear what else you're getting up to. So for today, Bye. thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, Glenn Matthews with the Tales from the Take. You can see his film and all the others as part of this year's Deep Fried Film Festival online or in person at venues um, that are shown on our Facebook page and on Eventbrite. So for now, this is Pulled Focus.